Hi all, I am Rosie Clark and I'm a Location Planning Manager at Max & Spencers and today I'm going to talk to you about the location planning for a changing shape of the M&S store estate. So to give you an uh, overview of my role, I'm responsible to ha for helping deliver uh, and developing the M&S store estate strategy. My particular focus is on the north of the UK, so that does include Scotland and Northern Ireland. So we use data and analytics to inform our decisions on the optimal location, format and size of stores. Today I'm going to discuss some of the cons key considerations that affect how we decide on the store estate strategy, particularly focusing on the food estate. So the first obvious factor affecting the store estate strategy is COVID, and I'm not going to talk about this in too much detail as I'm sure um, it's already a popular discussion point but it, I put this on here as it does clearly have massive impacts on our store estate uh, and therefore very important for us to understand the effects this has to the business. Um, and with m and selling both food and clothing, you can imagine this has quite, has had quite polar impacts um, on, on, this, on store sales. For, as, as you imagine, food sales have generally grown and the clothing sales have generally been negatively impacted. Although this is not the case across the whole estate, um, as you can imagine, the London stores, uh, high street stores, city centre stores, um, the food sales have also been um, impacted. So that's something that we need to monitor closely to see if the, any of these stores bounce back uh, and decide on help, let the helpers decide the strategy on these areas. Clearly, what COVID has also done is help us um, see a rise in online sales which leads me uh, quite nicely onto my next point, which is the m and and Ocado partnership. So for those of you that don't know, m and launched a joint venture with Ocado in September 2020. Uh, and this is a key focus area for us in location planning as we look to understand the impacts this will have on the store state. I'll discuss this in a bit more detail um, on the next slides. My next consideration is renewal. Uh, so internally, teams have done a lot of work creating renewal concepts um, for the stores, which is essentially modernization and transma transformation of the stores, creating a better shopping environment and experience for our customers. Uh, this has already been implemented in a number of our stores. We've got the likes of Clapham Junction, Hempstead Valley, Stain, Strayton, and recently opened in Vanguard, York. So if you are in live near any of these locations, I would recommend going to see them as they're quite different to our usual uh, usual stores and yeah something that we is going to play a, a big part in our location planning strategy going forward and finally the fourth considera consideration is larger food halls this is something that sort of comes in in tow with the renewal format um, these have been done together so we have done a fair bit of analysis looking at optimal footages for our stores considering a whole host of number of factors, uh, including catchment uh, demographics, catchment size, looking at store configurations, proximity to competitors, and overlaid some cost data with this. Um, as you probably see now, typically m and stores are a lot smaller than a lot of the other main grocery retailers, uh, but our analysis has suggested we could do bigger food halls in some locations. Um, and I'll look about this and how this might uh, change our location planning strategy in a few slides time. So to delve a bit deeper into the Ocado um, platform and how this affects our location planning. So uh, Ocado stocks a full range of food, m and food range, uh, which is around 6,000 products. Um, along with their own retail range, which means there's over 50,000 products. So there's a good, a good selection on there. Um, and it's clear from the graph at the bottom that we have seen an online sales food market grow, um, particularly as we went into lockdown in March 2020. And then what's good to see is also after the MNS launch on Ocado, we have then seen further increase in uh, online food sales. This growth was slightly limited as we didn't accept new customers for the first few months to get used to the systems and make sure everything was working um, okay. So we do hope that this will, um, will grow even more. So a key consideration to, uh, for us in location planning is to understand where 
this growth is coming from and where and does it affect our stores? So this brings me on to this slide, which shows a geographic variation um, in online sales. So one graph is showing where the increase in sales has been, and the other one shows the top spending areas. And Ocado currently covers around 74% of the UK population. Clearly from the maps, you can see that um, it's Wales, the very north of England and Scotland that are areas that are not currently um, served by cargo. So we need to consider how this will affect our stores. For example, do we need more stores in these areas that are not going to be served by a cargo? But there's also then the potential cargo expansion strategy. Will we then cover uh, more areas of the UK? So there's some alignment to go on there. So the key questions that this brings to us is uh, that we need to look into, has the behaviour of existing m and customers changed? So those that shopped with us um, previously. So are they shopping less in stores now and shifting more to online? And if we do start to see this, does that mean we need fewer stores? Um, however, some of the early data shows that um, customers who actually shopped both before both in Ocardio and m and are actually now spending more in stores. So um, yeah, that's quite interesting to see. And then another question we ask is, has the behavior of existing Ocardio customers changed? So are customers switching to Waitrose stores, for example? Because Waitrose um, previously had some of their products on Ocardio. Um, so yeah, have customers shifted? Early data suggests that there are actually more new customers than lost customers, but there are teams within m and that will look to see how best to retain customers. Um, and then what's really important for us to understand if customers are shopping more in terms of sales volume and frequency in m and stores. So for example, are customers discovering new products online and therefore uh, are they going to go into stores more often to you know, the products they like? Um, and we will consider our customers spending more online. Uh, we have found that the retained customers that were shopping in Cardo previously are now spending more um, at Cardo. So hopefully spending more on the M&S products. Um, and then we'll look at are there any new customers in stores as a result of the Cardo platform. There's a whole number of questions that we can ask ourselves here. Um, and in my particular team, we're focusing on how this does affect the stores and customer interactions with stores to then inform our um, store state strategy. But it also brings a whole host of other um, things that we need to consider, like click and collect points in stores. Do we need these for food um, as well as clothing? So lots of questions to be asked there. And then the next consideration I mentioned is the renewal concept and the larger format stores. So um, we need to understand how this is changing our consumers' behaviours and their interaction with stores. Again, this is the whole, uh, what we do in location planning. So one of the best ways um, to understand what works is to, we found is to analyse the stores which have this renewal uh, and stores where we have increased footage. And the challenge here is that we have so few of these stores, so it makes it difficult to decide what works and how um, and what we do with our future store estates. Um, so I'll talk through one example uh, in Staines, where we've recently uh, relocated to increase the food footage, and it got a renewal uh, format as well. So pictures on the slide are just some some pictures of uh, stores that have had renewal in them. You see, they're quite different to what you'd expect, very vibrant and fresh. So Staines, to give you an overview, um, we increased footage around 8,000 square feet. We moved from a high street location to Two Rivers Retail Park, taking a unit that was previously occupied by um, Waitrose. It was previously a full line store, so uh, stocked clothing, and now it's just a um, food store. So in terms of how well this is done, We've seen a massive increase in sales, and that has been driven by both basket spend and average basket size. Staines was actually, because it was a high street store, we did see a drop in food sales um, during sort of the main COVID lockdown. Um, so it's quite good that we've had 
and seen, so we have seen even further increase in our sales if we compare to, um, to the COVID period. And interestingly on this one, we have actually seen footfall decrease, but this is mainly uh, most likely due to the loss of the clothing and home um, section and move from a high street location to a retail park. Generally, the footfall is slightly, um, slightly lower. So what we need to do with this data is look at where these additional sales are coming from um, and how is, this is impacting any of our other stores. So this slide looks at where we've seen the sales increase. So this, um, the map on the left, the bright red um, area, so where the sales has increased the most. Um, so you can see there that the areas to the west of the stains store has increased the most. And if we use the um, Geolytics XYZ tool, this, mo this maps the, these little um, red and blue dots show where show an M&S index. So really red areas are very aligned to the MS type customer. So that's generally a older and more affluent customers. Although on food, we do see the a slightly younger demographic. So you can see that this ties in that actually we've seen the highest increase in sales in these affluent, um, affluent areas. And also interestingly, we've got the, the M25 just to the west of um, the stain store. So this suggests that it's not acting as a barrier to trade, which we often see with our stores, things like motorways or rivers um, often do act as a barrier. Um, however, this doesn't seem to be the case here. And there's also a Waitrose uh, to the west in Egham, um, but we've seen quite a high increase in sales from this area as well, which is quite interesting, which potentially suggests that the customers who were previously shopping in the Waitrose and then when that closed, maybe not so many of them did switch to the to the Egham store. Um, so um, interesting here, what we haven't seen is much of an increase in the catchment size, rather we've seen an increase in um, in the penetration, so more customers from that same area. And this is a good sign for us actually, because it means it's less likely to be impacting on some of our other stores, and means we can do more of these. So in summary, um, so there's a number of factors, um, both internally and externally, that are affecting our decisions in location planning. Uh, and it's our role to analyze impacts to stores and adjust the store state strategy accordingly. So we're always looking at sort of new data and new ways to um, track this and understand our state better and how our customers are shifting. Uh, some of the main factors that we are monitoring over the next few years is uh, the impacts of COVID, obviously, the shift to the online, uh, impacts of renewal stores and larger um, food formats. So thank you very much for listening to me today. Um, and any if you have any questions, sorry, I can't stay for questions. I'm not around for questions. It's 17th of May has meant I can now travel a lot more freely and have got lots of long overdue site visits to go to. So I am on the road somewhere. Um, but please email me or message me on LinkedIn if you do have any questions. Thank you.